Hey guys, this is just a quick little video tutorial explaining how drum triggers work so that you can better understand your precision kicks and triggering in general. The first thing you need to know about modern triggering is that almost every single trigger uses a piezoelectric microphone or transducer to pick up the sound of your hits that get transferred to your drum module or a microphone preamp if you're in the recording studio, for example. What this means is that there is a little tiny copper disc that has a chemical compound on the back of it with a couple of wires attached to it that whenever there is a sound or is a, um, an impact on it, for example, that sound is actually picked up and transferred along the cables. It's a really, really simple system. Uh, and basically what will happen is these piezos are not easily seen because they're usually protected by a covering or something else that's actually going to take the impact. They're actually very sensitive and it can be pretty easily damaged. So it's important to make sure that those piezos are really well protected. Piezos themselves are not actually matched in terms of the way they pick up sound. Uh, they're all manufactured differently. Different brands have different tolerances and all that sort of thing. And what we do with the precision kicks is that we make sure that every pair of precision kicks is actually matched for the amount of sensitivity on the piezos themselves. So whatever your drum module settings happen to be, uh, depending on you know a few little factors in terms of how you hit with your left and right foot, for example, the majority of your settings on your drum module should be almost the exact same. So you don't really have to spend too much time playing with your settings for one foot and then the other one as well. We make sure that all of our pairs are sent out matched and some of them might have a little less sensitivity, some have a little bit more, but effectively you're gonna get a uniform triggering ability from both of your triggers at all times. One thing that we're doing a little bit differently, instead of just protecting the top of the piezo, which a lot of triggers will do uh, for two reasons. One, to protect the piezo from breaking, and two, most importantly, to have enough surface area to take a hit from whether it's a bass drum skin or the actual pedal itself, um, these protectings will be on the top. And again, it's also just a fair amount of surface area to make contact with so that there is actually a noticeable sound that's created for the piezo to pick up. On the other end of it though, we actually have a custom acoustic chamber that sits below the piezo, which also adds further protection to the piezo, but also rejects a lot of noise outside of the direct hit that sometimes leads to mistriggering or um, re-triggering on other triggers. Um, you'll find even if you get like just sort of the generic triggers that you might find online, which are just like a uh, piezo in a wax housing, they're not very accurate because they're not properly protected and they're not really set up to do the jobs of something like the precision kicks. But basically with this extra protection underneath an acoustic chamber, we're rejecting a lot of the outside noise, whether it's from the body of the trigger itself or the bottom of your pedal board, the stage you're on and all that sort of thing. So basically by using that, we actually have an entirely encapsulated piezo that is super focused and mainly just picks up the sound that is hit directly in the middle of it. Now, you can set these up to be a little off-centered. It's not really going to make a difference, but the important thing is that all of your hits that are coming directly from your pedal board are going to be the majority of the signal that's going through the piezo. The actual noise level that you're getting is ridiculously low. And then from that point on, that sound that goes to your module is actually like just sort of like a ticking sound. It's, it's basically the sound of the pedal hitting the metal. And it's actually a really funny sound to listen to if you're in the studio, if you get to hear the raw sound. But what you want is for that sound to be accurately picked up by your module and turned into the kick sample, snare sample, whatever it is you're using um, for your triggers. Uh, at that point, every different drum module is going to have a, a certain bunch of settings that are different, but mostly do the same thing. And it's just down to a quick setup to what works best for you. Obviously, if you're doing double stroke stuff, that takes a lot of sensitive kicks in quick succession, you want to have a lower threshold, so it's picking up less volume or less intensity of a hit um, with a lower re-trigger sensitivity, which just means that you're getting less time between the hits that's allowed to come through. If you set your re-trigger value or your crosstalk value really, really high, what's happening is it might take that second hit as a mistrigger, and you don't really want that. And again, the reason we keep the noise level so low on the precision kicks is so that you're not really going to run into the chance of mistriggering. So the module doesn't have to work as hard to pick up those tiny sounds. What it's getting is 99% you know, of the time the actual hit instead of some noise that also goes in with it. So I hope that was educational for you guys. I hope that was a little bit informative. And again, if you haven't checked them out yet, precision kicks at precisionkicks.com. Cheers.